Hello, everybody. I'm Aaron Murphy, Executive Director of Montana Conservation Voters. And I'm Whitney Tawney, the Deputy Director. And we are recording this video with uh, Woodley the dog sleeping in the background. So if you hear dog snoring, uh, our apologies, but that's the way it goes in Montana. Um, we wanted to put this video together uh, to share with you some of the top 10 projects that we are uh, quite proud of at MCV just over the past year. Um, we made this presentation at our annual meeting in Helena, and we figured we'd put a video version together for folks who weren't able to be there. So with that, let's get into the top 10 projects of Montana conservation voters of the past year. Beginning with number 10, uh, our role at MCV in the Montana Outdoor Heritage Project. This was a statewide effort with a bunch of different conservation organizations to uh, explore the role of public lands in Montana and voters' uh, appetite for funding those public lands. And our goal was to hear from folks all over the state. We launched a canvas in the Flathead in Missoula, Helena, Bozeman, Livingston, and Billings. Uh, we wanted to hear from 1% of Montanans, which was 10,000 people. Uh, and so we launched a canvas and all together, um, MOHP filled out 11,000 surveys from folks all over the state. And um, at MCV, our role is with this canvassers. These canvassers that you see here, we knocked 15,000 doors across those eight cities. Uh, all together, we had 17 folks in the field. So it was quite an undertaking. Um, we had a lot of fun doing it, and we really got to learn a lot about uh, the state and where its priorities are. And, of course, we learned that Montanans really appreciate their public lands. Coming in at number nine uh, involves Governor Steve Bullock and him signing a very important uh, executive order. So you might see a photo here of our governor, and we're going to zoom in to see what that executive order was. Um, but this was an executive order that established a Climate Solutions Council as well as um, some further climate goals. And one of the things that was very exciting for us is that in the preamble, um, we were able to include language about a carbon-free energy future for Montana, which was the first time in Montana's history and clearly sets a path for a clean energy future, which is something that we are encouraging on a day-to-day -day basis. Coming in at number eight, every other year, MCV puts out a scorecard of the work of our legislators. Um, and so last year, we uh, put out a scorecard um, making... Um, taking a look at the work of the 66th legislature, one of the things that we really want to highlight is that this scorecard is online. Just go to mtvoters.org slash scorecard. You can see the whole thing there. Um, it is a, a big undertaking for us every other year, and it's also very important. So let's take a peek inside. So you'll see right away we are going to highlight our lifetime champions. Those are our folks that have 100% scores, and they have had 100% scores since they were elected, um, which is impressive that we have such a strong group. But we also take some time to highlight those that maybe aren't so great for us, um, which we call our dishonor role. These are folks that are taking steps back for conservation in Montana, regardless of its energy or public lands or anything else that we care about. And then here's a look at the scorecard inside. Uh, of course, we looked at nine different votes. We scored them. We told lawmakers that we were scoring them. And based on those votes, uh, that's where we get our scores. We did that for both the House and the Senate. Um, and it, we, we really encourage folks to take a peek at our scorecard online. Coming in at number seven was an event that we held on October 10th of 2019. It was our 20th birthday, and we celebrated with a party. But we made it a party uh, to honor some of our legislators of the year. And I was really excited because we had two really strong women who joined me on stage to grab their inaugural legislative awards, um, Representative Denise Heyman and Representative Lori Bishop. We call this the Blue Marble Award because these are people that are taking care of Montana, but also our globe with the legislation that they are championing and moving forward. Also at this uh, party, we heard from the Brainerd Foundation's Keiki Kehoe, also Commissioner Josh Slotnick of Missoula County, who spoke about the impact of MCV during his election, and Senator John Tester up on stage with his wife, Sharla. Um, Senator Tester reached in and pulled out a $100 bill and challenged everybody else to do the same. If you know Senator Tester, you know that that doesn't happen very often. So uh, it was an exciting event for us. Uh, we had a lot of fun, and we're going to do it again this year for our 21st birthday. So we're asking you to save the date 
On Thursday, um, October 1st, we will be doing our birthday gala again in Livingston. So please mark your calendars. More information coming. Coming in at number six is a website that we launched called keepshining.us. Uh, let's take a look at it. It is an effort to uh, celebrate Governor Steve Bullock's role in fighting dark money throughout his political career. And a reminder to Montanans that we have a lot more work to do. Uh, we actually launched a petition to make sure that people understood that future lawmakers and executives um, have a responsibility to fight dark money in our state because it has an impact on our environmental landscape as well as our political landscape. And coming in at number five, a little bit of internal work with our strategic planning. We had a um, retreat uh, in this fall where we talked about our missions and our priorities. Uh, we came up with new mission statements. This is the mission statement for the Montana Voters Education Fund. This is our 501c3. And of course, we also had a mission statement for Montana Conservation Voters, which is our 501c4 organization. Both similar. Um, the I want to highlight that very last uh, part. Uh, we do hold accountable leaders who do not follow our mission. And that's really important work because it brings us to number four. Um, so if you know anything about Montana, you know that our public lands are kind of the fabric of who we are and what makes up our state. Um, and in particular, we decided to hold Senator Steve Daines accountable on funding for our public lands through the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Um, this is an important program or fund for us because it is responsible for funding our outdoor recreation economy. So what we did is a bunch of different tactics, including um, the billboard that you just saw, plus newspaper ads, homepage takeovers in his hometown newspaper, the Bozeman Daily Chronicle, uh, as well as other statewide newspapers, also on mobile phones, also on yard signs. We, of course, um, sent letters into his office from grassroots Montanans who are um, wanting to make sure that they heard from them. And in August, we held a pretty significant protest right outside of an event where Senator Daines was speaking. Of course, he didn't want to speak with us, but uh, we got some pretty good statewide uh, recognition about that protest. And of course, we commissioned our own private label, Give It Back Vodka. Give It Back is uh, the name of this campaign. It is a play off of Senator Daines' own um, uh, political messaging from 2007 when he first arrived on the political scene. Um, this vodka was a lot of fun. We actually had a, a party where we um, had special drinks like the Funding Fizz and the Full 900 using our private label vodka, which is available for folks who want it. Um, and speaking of accountability, we, we took our accountability work to a new level with a statewide TV ad campaign, um, very significant effort to make sure that people uh, knew what Senator Daines was and wasn't doing on the Land and Water Conservation Fund. So we had radio ads and this statewide TV ad. Let's take a look at it. Public lands are a way of life here. And we rely on money from the Land and Water Conservation Fund to keep them accessible. So when Senator Steve Daines promised to support Montana's public lands, but then shortchanged them by hundreds of millions, Montanans noticed. He sold us out and put all of this at risk. Senator Daines, put our money where your mouth is and fully fund our public lands. As you can see there, um, a lot of fun with that TV ad running statewide. Brings us to number two, um, something we're very proud of. In the city of Billings, um, MCV was instrumental in electing a conservation majority to the Billings City Council. Over the summer, we realized we had an opportunity to do so with five uh, candidates up in five different wards in Billings, and we got behind four of those. Um, and if we won three of them, we'd win a conservation majority. That's exactly what we did. So uh, here's a look at some of our tactics in that effort. Uh, we put out mail pieces uh, for Kendra Shaw and Danny Chiriki, who are now active council members. Uh, we also went online with this campaign. Um, at the end of the day, we sent more than 12,000 mailers, uh, more than 12,000 text messages to voters. We contacted about 1,400 people via phone, and we had a three-person canvas uh, in the field in Billings, knocking doors, making sure folks were aware of our candidates. Uh, that was all done through the Montana Conservation Voters Action Fund. And that brings us to our number one um, 
uh, project of the year, which is actually a project that will be coming very soon. Uh, today we are announcing the launch of the Montana Engagement Project, which is a very exciting effort that we are putting together with our friends over at Western Native Voice. It will be a canvas on the other side of the state. We'll be in Glasgow, Wolf Point, Poplar, Circle, Glendive, and Baker. This is the route of the Keystone XL Pipeline, which is very much a real thing that will be affecting northeastern Montana uh, within the next few months, and we want to be in front of that story. We will be launching the KXL Canvas. Uh, this will be boots on the ground, folks visiting these communities, uh, and making sure that we provide good information, and just as important, engaging people, making sure that we get good information from them. Uh, we will be launching it in May of 2020. Um, the other neat thing about this project is we will be embedding with the canvassing team a professional podcast producer to tell the story along the way. So we're very excited about the KXL Canvas, a project of MEP and the Western Native Voice. And um, that's a look at uh, some of the things that we've done in the past year. We hope you enjoyed it and um, we'll be back soon. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to become an MCV member if you're not already.